Good morning or afternoon or evening, whenever you are watching this. We're just really glad that you are tuning in to worship with us. This is Northminster Presbyterian Church in Tucson, online service today. And I'm going to be reading from Ephesians 2 uh, for our call to worship. This is verse 4 and 5. Because of his great love for us, God, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. Would you pray with me today? Dear God, we just thank you for the grace that you have given us through Jesus Christ. God, we know that we have said wrong things, that we've done things that we shouldn't have done. But we thank you that you forgive us when we ask. God, we ask that you would just be here with us today, that you would fill our hearts, that you would turn our eyes and our ears and our minds towards you so that we can hear from your word. God, we pray for anybody who's listening to this right now. God, I pray that they would be blessed by this service, that they would be able to draw close to you, whether they're in their living room or their bedroom or out on their back porch listening and watching. God, we know that you are everywhere among us. And we pray that prayer together that Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We're going to sing two songs together, and I hope that you will sing along with us wherever you are. Um, we're going to sing a song called Who You Say I Am, and then Build Your Kingdom Here. Sunset free. 
Julia and crew, thanks so much. Good morning, happy Independence Weekend. I'm Andy Ross, and along with Pastor Pete and our uh, AV crew and our praise band team, we want to welcome you. What a glorious weekend. Uh, we are celebrating 
uh, the independence and freedom we have as a country, and in worship we're declaring our dependence, our dependence on our living God who gives us our daily bread, our purpose in life, and the hope of a new start in Jesus Christ. And so, friends, uh, I, along with others, we want to welcome you and thank you for joining us today. It's been a great weekend. The fires are subsiding in the mountains. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, fire crews. Uh, I hope your dogs and cats and pets have recovered from the booms last night. Uh, be extra gentle with them today. And we hope this service is a blessing for you, an encouragement in you, for you in your walk with God. And if it is, uh, we'd love le hearing that. And we'd really love it if you pass this link on to others in your life. Practice digital evangelism. Share our links, share our daily devotionals with others in your life, and help us spread the good news that Christ is here, Christ has won, and in Jesus Christ we find our real peace. So welcome. Uh, as you're participating with us online, I want to encourage you to fill out that communication card. Let us know that you're here with us. Uh, we'd love to hear that in any prayer requests that you have or answers to prayer. We read and pray through those every week, and it's a great insight for us. Um, there's lots of online and digital resources from our church for you, and you can learn about classes that are coming up. Uh, we're continuing our conversations on race discussion group. Uh, we've got some new Bible studies that have just started. You can get in on those want to encourage you that if you're in tough times, on Monday nights at 5.30, we have a grab-and-go uh, supper on the north side of our campus. Just come on by. We'd be happy to help you uh, with some food. Tuesday mornings at 9 a.m. in our south parking lot, we also have groceries on a walk-through and pick-up basis. And that's our deacon's pantry. Uh, we've been running it for, for years. And we would love to uh, help you, just to help you get by if you need it. I just want to encourage you that we have a Cyber Cafe Fellowship coming up uh, after worship at 12.30 p.m. You do need to register for that. It's a Zoom fellowship. Just a half hour to check in with Pastor Pete and say hi to one another and just check in. And uh, it's, it's a real blessing if you've not done that before. Um, and lastly, uh, there are some new updates on how our church is grappling with this COVID pandemic. We formed a new task force. We're looking into how and in what safe ways we can consider reopening. We're uh, moving forward with an air purification project, and uh, we could sure use any special gifts or offerings if you'd like to help support that. Just mark your special gift, Clean Air. And we will be so grateful, but uh, we're glad that we're going forward with that. And I think, uh, I think that's enough of the announcements. The rest you can check out on our website uh, or on that bulletin uh, that you can see on your web platform. We are just blessed that you are here with us and that together uh, on this beautiful weekend, we can praise the living God. Let's take some time now and uh, focus our hearts and direct our attention to the living God who has already been focused on us. Let us pray. Gracious, living God, you give us each breath. You give us these amazing bodies you give us family members, loved ones, those who mean so much. And Lord, in worship today, we, we just remember how you gave us your most precious gift, your son, to be our friend, to shepherd us through life, and to quite radically save us from ourselves. So Lord, we worship you and we praise your name. Lord, on this weekend, as we think about the United States of America and who we are in the world these days, we thank you for the freedoms we enjoy. 
God, we thank you for the blessings of our laws and the Bill of Rights, our Constitution, just how wisely our country was formed and assembled. And God, you know more than us the aches and the pains of what we have been going through. Lord, we pray for healing. We pray for justice. We pray for your kingdom to come, just as we were singing. Show us, Lord, each of us, how to be better at living as a good citizen. Lord, show us this week how we can respect your laws and the, the lawmakers and those who serve in our country. God, we, we confess we make jokes about politicians, but in worship we pause to thank you for those who've chosen in their life to be civil servants in such difficult roles. So Lord, we pray for our president, those in our nation, national leadership. We pray for our governor, those in state leadership. We pray for our mayor and those who serve here in our city. Lord, they're tough roles. And we pray that your wisdom, your spirit of justice, truth, and abounding love would guide their minds and roles and their lives. As we pray that for ourselves, Lord, show us how to be generous. Show us how we can be heroic for someone else. God, it's easy to wave a flag and light a sparkler, but we know it's what's much more important is to walk in your ways and to live that life which adds to the lives of others. Lord, we pray for uh, the health of this world and our own specific region. We pray, Lord, for those who serve in medical research, but also by medical beds and clinics. We pray for your protection. We pray for healing. Show us, Lord, every day how to be careful and caring in just the right ways. Show us, Lord, how to live as not just good and faithful citizens of this country, but to be good and faithful citizens of even your higher kingdom. Our words, our actions, even our thoughts and emotions. Jesus, center our lives in you now and in the days of this week. Lord, bring your healing to those in our lives who are hurting. Bring your hope to those who are grieving. Bring your peace, Jesus, we pray, please, into our own lives that we might share that peace with others. Oh, Lord, once we were no people, but now you've claimed us to be your children, children of light, walking in you. Guide us each day. And Lord, as we bring to you our offerings and gifts, bless and use them for your work. Lord, may your will be done. May your kingdom come. We pray all these things in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We prepare for our offerings now, and as you enjoy this music, just want to encourage you that when it comes to your gifts, they mean so much to the work that we're doing as a congregation in southern Arizona. Uh, you can mail your gifts or drop them off or electronically uh, send them off our website. You can even text them. And I just want to thank you in advance. Glory be to God. May every offering and gift bring praise to his name and his love and help to those around us. Amen.
Amen. Thanks for singing along with us. Uh, what a great day it is to be together. And I've got a message for some kids, and I've got bowls of stuff. <laughs> yes, that's right. Now, when you're about to have um, or watch a movie, what's one of the best foods that you can have with you when you're about to watch a movie? Anyone on the praise team have an idea? Popcorn. Popcorn, yeah! Popcorn! That's what I have. All right, I got a couple bowls here. And I just wanted, wanted to see if you, what you guys thought. You know, like, if someone said, hey, we've got, I've got popcorn for you. Here you go. And then you got this, this bowl of popcorn. I don't know, you probably can't even see that. But there's just, it's just like someone ate it all. It's just like what's left. There's hardly anything in there. But this bowl, can you see how there's popcorn even over the top of it? And, oh, wow, I can take one and eat it. And you can't even tell that I took one. It's still full. Yeah. Today in our Bible reading, Jesus is talking to us. He's talking to us a lot. But one of the important things that he says is, I'm telling all of this for, to you for a very important reason. Well, what's the reason Jesus is talking to us a lot? Well, he's telling us that the most important reason is that he would have his joy. We would have his joy and that his joy would be complete in us. And that word complete can also mean full. That just like a full bowl of popcorn is way more joyful than kind of just the one with just a little bit of popcorn in it, that Jesus wants us and our joy to be full. When you think about it, God loves us so very, very much. He wants us to know his love and his peace and for our joy to be a lot. Not just like a little bit of joy, like meh, 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 but a whole lot of joy. That's good news. All right, we're going to read some scripture this morning as a part of our sermon. And we're continuing our, our uh, sermon series on family matters, okay? Maybe you're with your family right now. Uh, maybe you have family that lives far apart from you, uh, and you're not, you've not been able to see them very much uh, in person. Maybe you've been able to see digital versions of them. But we realize as a church, we also are family, that our Father, when we pray to God our Father, that we're part of a large family. And there are all kinds of important things that God has for us that uh, help us. Now, in this really strange time, none of us have ever experienced these kinds of issues around us before. And we imagine, you know, time before coronavirus, right? Oh, wow, wouldn't it be light, nice to be back there? Wouldn't it be nice to live normal again? Except what we're learning is that we're going to be living not normal for a while. We can't go back in time. We're like here, and we're looking back in time. We can't go back there. But when we're thinking about the future, like I've been talking to some teachers, they're a little bit like not sure what school looks like in the fall. None of us know what's going to happen. And in fact, even from month to month, we're not really sure how things are going. And that means that we don't know where we're going in the future either. So we can't go back where we were. We can't go that way. So where are we? Are we just lost? Are we without hope? Are we in trouble? Well, one of the fancy words I learned in school was that the, the space that we're in right now, it's called a liminal space. Liminal. Ha. means we're in between. And that when we think about going forward, we have to be careful not just to take our past with you, but we're going to have to find something new. And when we look in the Bible, we see that God works in liminal spaces. It's in those kinds of spaces when we're in between or when we're not sure what's going to be coming ahead that God shows up and God grows us. It's when we are really ready to know more about what God wants to do in and through us. It's when grace, when God's grace becomes super real to us. So think of this time not just as an opportunity to 
um, pile on, you know, bandwagons or hit forward about weird messages. But this is a time when God wants to do something in us, something that will be preparing us for great things. So last week, Pastor Ken, in his really good sermon, talked about the first part of John chapter 15. And it's where Jesus says, I am the vine, right? I'm the true vine. And we learned about what it means to remain and to live connected to Jesus Christ. And so today, we're continuing that same scripture chapter, John chapter 15. But I want you to know that there's, uh, I've been doing some word count. I, I counted the words, or some of the words, in our verses today, and there are a lot of repeated words. Okay, so kids, if you're at home today and you've got a Bible there, and uh, you've got maybe a highlighter or a, a circle, you know, like, like a pen or something like that, and you want to write down uh, what, what I'm, uh, you know, like the numbers of words that are there, you can... Uh, do this, okay? So there's one word, is I or me. That's a first-person pronoun. It's when Jesus is talking about himself. I counted over 20 times that, it's, that, that Jesus is talking, he's referring to himself. I counted several times. I hope I got it right. Over 20. You or your, that word, which is like second person, it's actually a plural. Every time it's used, it's a plural. It's not just talking, Jesus isn't just talking to one person or uh, one person that's in the room or not just talking to me or you. He's talking to the disciples, the group that's there. And I think we can include ourselves in that, that Jesus is talking, when he says you, he means all of us. I counted more than 15 times, he says you. And then there's the word love. I counted the word love nine times. And then there's the word command. The word command is listed five times. So if you can imagine what this scripture is about, Jesus is talking about himself, he's talking about us, he's talking about love, and he's talking about a command. So let's pay attention here as we read. We're going to be reading John chapter 15 at verse 9. Jesus said this, <clears throat> As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life <clears throat> for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants, because a servant does not know his father's business, or his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, and so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command. Love each other. Let's pray about that. God, we thank you for this gift of your, the reading of your word. Will you meet us here now? Will you teach us? Will you help us to know all that Christ commands, and how we can follow him today. Amen. It was several months ago, before the pandemic, when I learned of a couple who was here from East Africa. They were displaced immigrants, and they had come from just a terrible situation and they were completely in need of housing and food. And through one of the organizations in our community, they had connected with a family, uh, a couple who was able to put them in their house, but it was a little bit far on the west side of town. It was far away from the bus stop. And you could tell that the couple was a little bit irritated that these, 
that the, the, the American couple was a little bit irritated that the African couple was going to be staying there for an extended time because it takes a long time to be able to get an authorization to work once you come as a displaced immigrant. And so you could tell the tension was rising and it came to the point where the American couple gave that African couple kind of an ultimatum. They said, you know what, we need you to move out. Well, the African couple was really up in distress. They didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to do. It's, it's hard sometimes to find people who are willing to open their homes and their lives to people who come, uh, even for an extended period of time. And so I was praying, and I began to think about who is in my network that I can begin to ask. And so I put something on Facebook, and I, I put a couple messages out. And someone responded back to me, someone who doesn't go to our church, but whose mother does go to our church. And she mentioned that, you know, uh, my mom, she's perfect for this. And so I went to this young lady in our congregation uh, who's widowed, and she's in her 80s, and she wanted to talk about what it would mean to host this couple in her home. And as we met together, as we talked, she seemed perfect. She seemed open-hearted. Uh, she lived nearby. She lived close to a bus route where transportation would be uh, not an issue. Uh, she had room in her home. And most importantly, what she said to me really struck me. Before we prayed, she looked me in the eyes and she said, I just want them to feel like they're at home. It's one thing to have a place to stay. It's one, one thing to kind of get an overnight lodging, but it's an entirely different thing to feel like you're at home. I don't know what it means for you to feel at home, but maybe it's you feel free to take your shoes off and put your feet up. Maybe it's that you don't feel like you have to walk around in your best clothes, or any clothes for that matter. Okay, get that vision out of your head. Jesus is trying to help us understand what it means to abide in him, to live in him, to remain in him, to feel at home in him. There are important ingredients that Jesus has for us. When we think back uh, a couple chapters before, just the, just the chapter before chapter 15, chapter 14, Jesus is anticipating this fact that he's not going to be there with the disciples any longer. He is going to be leaving. And he says he's going to be sending his spirit. So it's not like he's leaving them all high and dry, but he's explaining to them what his legacy is going to be. And one of the main things that Jesus wants to give is his peace. In John 14, 27, you might have heard this verse before, Jesus says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. When you think about what the world gives or what we expect the world to give to us, Jesus says that's not, that's not his deal. What do we expect to get from the world? Well, usually it's power or control or wealth or influence or even our health. We might refer to all of this as privilege. That the things that we feel like we can get from the world ourselves would be privileges to live, to have life and to have liberty, to have the freedom to pursue happiness and to purchase property. But Jesus is saying that is not the chief legacy he wants to leave with us. He wants to leave us a resource that is deeper and more important. And the first one is peace. Jesus wants to help us know what it means to live in his peace. Even as we are bombarded with news that's mostly bad, or mostly divisive, or mostly discouraging. 
Jesus says, let all of that go. I've heard one teacher talk about recently the importance to go through maybe a fast of media. Maybe just to separate ourselves uh, from all of the bad influence and bad news and bad things that we're hearing right now so that we can have a bit of uh, a sabbatical, reconnecting really with what our purpose is. And the first part of Jesus' legacy is peace. But Jesus now in the scripture that we read today is expanding his legacy to explain that he's also wanting to give his disciples and us his love. In verse 9, we see that he says, As the Father has loved me, so I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you think about that love of the Father, and Jesus talking about this love of the Father, we're beginning to think uh, a little bit abstractly, right? And this is what we believe about the, the Trinity, that Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are one God in three persons, but it's one God. But within those three persons of our one God, we understand that there is an eternal love of infinite depth and meaning. Elsewhere, the Apostle Paul in in Ephesians tries to help us imagine what the magnitude of God's love is in all different directions. And he says, how wide and how deep and how high and how long is the love of God. And he wants us to uh, have an ability to comprehend that. Well, almost by definition, we can't comprehend it because we're human. But even still, Jesus is saying, as the Father has loved me, I have loved you. It's not a different kind of love. It's not a different love altogether or a subspecies, kind of like a small version of love or a human type of love. No, love is love. The same love that interconnects the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, that same love is the connection that Jesus is loving us with. And if we follow this chain along to verse 12, he says, my command is this. Love each other as I have loved you. So as the Father has loved me, Jesus says, I've loved you. And as I have loved you, I want you to love each other. Seems easy, right? Except it's difficult. And in between, in verse 10, it says, if you keep my commands. And I think this is a little bit misleading. Because usually when we read if, we think of that as like a condition. Like, if you keep my commands, he writes, you will remain in my love, and just as I have kept my Father's commands, and remain in his love. And sometimes I think we, we think, okay, if we're, able, if we're able to love and keep Jesus' commands, then we'll remain in his love. Well, I can't do that. So I'm not going to even try. That's not what Jesus is getting at. What Jesus is getting at is Jesus always goes forth. Remember, later on in the scripture, he says, I choose you, chose you, remember? You didn't choose me, I chose you. He loved us first. So, it's not so much that we um, have the power to come up with this love and keeping the Father's commands and remaining in his love. No, the reason we want to do that is because Jesus loved us first. And he gives us that desire to follow through on this command. So we have these two key resources. Jesus wants to leave us his peace. He wants to, and he tells us he gives us his love. And then the purpose is this, because Jesus' peace plus Jesus' love equals Jesus' joy. Verse 11, I have told you this, he says, so that my joy might be in you and that your joy might be full up, fuller than a bowl of popcorn fuller than you can imagine is your joy. Jesus goes on to say that because of this joy, he describes how we are friends. And greater love has none none than this than to lay one's life down for his friends. That in Jesus' joy being full and extending that to us, he empties himself of the need to 
be filled with the things as the world gives, all of those privileges. So that Jesus' one desire is to give his life for his friends. That is how he lives and obeys his Father's command. Joy to the full. Last summer, I've alluded to our, our trip to Europe, and I've got, I've got another picture to show. We went, uh, this was the first town that we went, and it was Bacharach. Bacharach, you know, I can't say it very well. But it's a little town along the Rhine River. And if you walk around this town, there's a wall, and right inside the wall, right below where this old castle monastery is, are these vineyards, Weinberg. And if you look carefully at these vineyards, you see that there's a name there. And it is Weinmeister Karl Heinrich. That's his vines there. And it says, von Mai, 1940. I don't know how to say 1940 in German. But what we realize is, I was putting it together, these, these vines have been alive since 1940. They've been producing grapes for wine for many, many years. 80 years. I want you to imagine what it would be like if you were in need of a job and you were boating down the Rhine, and you came to Bacharach, and you came and you find Weinmeister Karl Heinrich. And you go to the Weinmeister. And you say, Meister, because it's kind of fun to say. But you say you need a job, and your, your resume is not very good, but you give it to him anyways. He kind of glances at it. He goes, okay, I'm going to hire you to be a part of our family business. Because what we do is we make vine. And when we make wine, we have very important protocols and things that we do. I want you to do everything that I'm going to teach you about how to take care of the vines. Because the purpose of taking care of the vines is to produce fruit, to produce grapes. And when we produce the right grapes the right way and we can uh, make those grapes into juice and then that ju juice turns into wine and then we sell the best Vine in the Rhine. That's what he would say. And one day you are uh, trying to figure out a problem, and you're not quite sure where it is, and you begin to look for the Meister. You don't know exactly where he is, the Vine Meister. And you open a door, and you realize that he's in the back room, but he's, sa he's sat down, and he's eating a pretzel. And there's some sauerkraut soup there as well. He's eating lunch. And he invites you in, and you're like, oh, no, no, wait, I, I didn't really mean to interrupt you, Meister. I just had a problem, and I'll come back later when you're done with your, with your meal. And, and the Vine Meister invites us closer. Says, no, come in, please. Look, even though I am the Vine Meister, I want you to think of me and know me as your friend. Because I don't want there to be a secret about how we make wine here, about how we produce good fruit and grapes. Everything that I know I want to teach to you. In fact, come and sit and eat with me. Because even though I'm the master, you're my friend. Wouldn't you just love the master even more? The master who calls you his friend? The master who doesn't hide anything from you? Wouldn't you do anything to please him? Wouldn't you yearn and desire to follow his instructions, his commands? Wouldn't you want to sit with him and eats at his table. Our master and friend, Jesus, said, this is my command. Love each other. He says, I've hired you 
to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Let us pray. God, we give you thanks. We thank you for the gift of our Master Jesus. We thank you for the promise of his peace. We thank you for how he showed his love for us on the cross. That he died for us and for our sins. That we would be washed clean. That we would be empowered by his spirit to follow him and to live for him in this world. And we confess that we forget this all the time. That our singular purpose is to live according to Jesus, to take up our own crosses, to follow him, to show our love to others. We thank you that your joy is full, Jesus, and that you long for our joy to be full as well. Remove in us any barriers, God, that is keeping us from you. Give us a desire by your grace and spirit to seek you, and in seeking you that we might find you, knowing that we have not chosen you, but you have chosen us. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Love that feeds us. Fruit of the Spirit that comes to us in real life. That's what the communion of our Lord Jesus Christ means. Friends, we are going to celebrate communion through the action and ministry of God's Holy Spirit right now. And so uh, you will need a, an element of bread and you will need an element of juice. If you don't have that uh, now, go and find it. <laughs> uh, you have a few moments to go and collect that. Uh, an element of bread and an element of juice. And we believe and celebrate that it's the Holy Spirit of love, love incarnate, love in Jesus, that makes this online table work. The real bread and the real juice is for us now, through the ministry of the Holy Spirit, an experience of Jesus caring for us, feeding us, sharing with us in real ways how His Spirit goes with us, nurtures us, feeds us, every day. Friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. People will come from east and west, from north and south, and sit at table in the kingdom of God, the kingdom of Jesus, the kingdom of his spirit. Jesus says, remain in me. I will remain in you. This is how we experience that. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never thirst. Friends, this is the Lord's table. And I hope you've had a moment now to uh, make sure you have an element of bread or perhaps a cracker or, um, and also an element of juice or drink. Let's partake together. We're going to share with you a litany, a call and response litany, and especially because we're physically uh, dispersed. I, I just think it's so important that we share and say these words aloud together. I will say the L or leader lines, and I want to invite you to join with Pastor Pete and others in saying the P or people lines. May this be a way for us to gather our hearts at Christ's table. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. 
We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right for us to give thanks and praise. Loving God, you made this world marvelous for us to enjoy. You gave Jesus to be our Savior and friend and to bring us to you. You sent your Spirit to make us one family in Christ. We thank you that you showed your love by sending your Son, who gave his life for us and rose again from death and lives to pray for us forever. We thank you that he has taken away all that separates us from you and has made us friends with you and with one another. We thank you that he has brought us together at this table to strengthen us by his love. Send your Holy Spirit on us and these gifts of bread and juice that we may know Christ's presence real and true and be his faithful followers, showing your love for the world. Through Christ, with Christ, in, in Christ, in the, the unity of the Holy Spirit, Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, Almighty Father, forever. Amen. Amen. Our Lord Jesus, on the night of his arrest, when he was with his friends, he took the bread, and after giving thanks to God, he broke it. And he said to his disciples, this is my body, which is broken for you. Take, eat, do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, Jesus took the cup. And he said, this cup is now the cup of a new covenant sealed in my blood, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink of this, do this in remembrance of me. Friends, every time we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the saving death of our Lord until he comes again. And we do so with thanksgiving. Let us offer to God our grateful praise. Take and eat the body of Christ broken for you. Take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you. Oh God, you have met us here in worship. We ask that these moments of peace, these moments of love, these moments of joy, that they would extend and last. That the Spirit, as you have met us here, we would be in a continual communion with you and with one another in spite of distance. So Lord, knit our hearts with yours and all of us together that we might be your church in this world. A church to rise above the difficulties and the, the seeking out of, of the things of this world and the privilege that all are desiring. And that we would in the same 
model of Jesus Christ, be willing to empty ourselves, to humble ourselves, to even lay down our lives for our friends. This is a big ask. It is difficult to do. But your spirit is ever with us, empowering us, helping us to know we were never alone. Oh, it is good. So we give you thanks, Jesus, for this meal. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. Now as we conclude our service, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you, to be gracious to you. May the Lord give you his peace wherever you go, even if you stay in your home. And may you remain in Christ, regardless of our situation. Amen.